Brought to you by War Thunder. They say too many cooks spoil the broth, but when you're playing as the Brits, there isn't much there to spoil. Ah! Hello, and welcome back to Total Warhammer 3, where I've been tempted down a gluttonous one-way road of obesity and heart disease by my ogre brothers. Now, my one goal in my quickly dwindling lifespan is to satiate both my own exotic desires and those of the Great Maul, the pseudo-god of the ogre tribes, which these reprobates have gaslit themselves into believing is actually real and will bless them in battle if they donate their spare meat to it. And so today we will be joining the ogres in their delusional attempts to appease a giant hole in the ground by sending my boys on a dangerous food tour, which will take them to the ends of the world in the hunt for a plethora of endangered animals roaming the far reaches of the map. To complete our culinary tour, we must consume four specific rare species in no particular order. These creatures being the rotting leviathan of the vampire coast, a Beastman Saigor, the Skaven's Giant Rat, and finally the Lizardmen's Dread Saurian. <laughs> But I don't want anyone else to be enjoying these animals with us, so we will be ensuring that we hunt these rare creatures to extinction by making sure to destroy each respective faction. <coughs> to achieve this, we will head to the west of the map, passing by Skaven and Beastmen territory, before finally arriving on the Vampire Coast, where we can push inland to reach the Lizardmen. Today I'm going to be playing as Greasus, mainly because he looks funny. I've conquered all the chippies, I'm never gonna stop. And also because the only other option is a sex offender, and that's not great for branding. Now, we start out in the middle of the map in some random fucking mountains, and must make our way out. To start, I upgrade Root Marcher for faster travel around the map, and Inspiring Presence to allow my units to gain as much experience as possible early on. Currently, our army is comprised of no more than a few football hooligans we found outside the local Greggs at our starting settlement. We are also joined by Furt Stank, our designated fire belly and personal chef who will be doing us the honor of cooking our rare feasts. Now we need to head here, but the only problem is that we're landlocked by the Chinese to the east, the Polish to the south, the Finns to our west, and the Americans up to our north. Now thankfully, since we're heading west, we could likely avoid the Chinese, though, as my social credit is running way too low at the minute to risk straying into another one of my iconic Chinese misadventures. So our highest chance of escaping the mountain and getting out of this mess alive is by uniting all of the ogre clans to join us on our food tour. So to do this, I open up the diplomacy menu and offer them a few stale McDonald's fries I found on the backseat of my Honda Jazz, along with a peace treaty, a Twix, and a Dairy Milk Marvelous Creations bar that I got on a £2 deal at Tesco's Express. This warmed them up, but they still wouldn't ally with us yet. I hired a new lord, Vud Tyrant Bane, seeing as I was planning to make this guy one of my main lords, getting him early into the campaign meant that he would reach level 20 sooner and would also gain the accompanying invincibility a lot faster. With my forces growing, some ogre clans allowed us military access into their lands. Not allies yet, but it was a start. Now, I decided the most sensible option was to push into other territories and steal up some settlements, both for my own protection and income, as well as the ability to expand my unit roster. And of course, our first enemy is the one and only Helmand Gorst. This could almost have become a problem if the Caravan of Blue Roses was actually a good faction, uh, but fortunately they're not, so before they even have time to grow their forces, I decide to quickly wipe them out. <laughs> That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! Yeah, no, stay down. <coughs> Fuck off, Ghost. Get out of here. Gorst was gone, and our army was growing nicely. Remember Furt, who I mentioned earlier? Well, I wanted him to become the main casting slash damage unit of my group, and so invested into skills that let him do large area of effect damage to big groups of enemies. And so I started upgrading some spells, mainly Fireball and Burning Head. Oh, look at this guy, isn't that just epic? And it seems that our rapidly growing strength and willingness to commit war crimes had intimidated the other ogre clans 
plans into forming some closer relations with us, especially Mal Bob of the Crossed Clubs clan, who had joined our confederation and was now part of our army. Now that we were stronger and we were bordering onto Kugaf's territory, I was just about to declare war on him and snatch up his land, but narrowly changed my mind after the Chaos Dwarves instead declared war on me. Now you see, it turns out that ogres, unsurprisingly, aren't too well liked by the other faction. You sent me a message first, yeah? I live in Smevic, Birmingham. If you want the fucking brawl, come down to Smevic, ask for Danny G. I'll come out of my house and I'll break your fucking legs, you little prick! Oi, stop shouting. Who do you think you are? So to fix this, we would need to practice diplomacy and win the trust of as many allies as possible. Essentially, if a faction didn't have something we wanted, that being a protected species to consume, we would happily live, laugh, and love with them, especially our fellow r slash chonkers. We're quickly warming to our attempts to nurture a gluttonous codependence with, but this would quickly change. Out of seemingly nowhere, the orcs had joined the Chaos Dwarves in in popping a unsolicited hate boner for us, and were beginning to penetrate deep into our territory. In doing so, they wiped out the other two ogre clans, the Sons of the Mountain and the Lazars. On the bright side though, we did manage to win a few battles against this dickhead, and had a pretty sizable army going. They also unlocked this spell for third stain. Not bad, but honestly, overall, we were doing great. Relations on all sides were hastily worsening, and I began to suspect that Kugath and the CCP were also on the brink of declaring war on me. There was no longer a homeland to defend, and I feared that the Skaven would soon be too powerful to take on if I left it any longer. So I'd head west to hunt down our first meal, the giant rat. So let's go eat some rats. But first, ad time. That's right, this video is sponsored by War Thunder. Are you into military history? Do you like blowing others up? Well, War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, featuring 10 major nations, 2,500 planes, fighter jets, helicopters, ships, and tanks, both old and new. War Thunder is available on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, and is heavily optimized to deliver you a smooth and seamless realistic war experience and requires no additional flight sticks, neural links, or gadgets and gizmos to play. Even your highly illegal pet chimp can play it. So join the ever-growing worldwide community of over 70 million players and a handful of chimps in epic PvP battles. Play War Thunder using my link in the pinned comments or video description below. And both new and returning players that haven't played in six months will receive the massive bonus pack across all platforms. Multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator, Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and seven whole days of premium account access completely for free. But be quick, this offer is only available for a limited time. But back to the video. Where was I? Oh yeah. On my way to Skaven territory, I had begun pushing into Chaos Dwarf lands. This presented a bit of a conundrum. As I was traveling, I would be unable to capture enough provinces to expand my army, at least so I thought. Heading west into Chaos Dwarf territory, I finally understood the ogre's true strength. Camping. God, my head has gone light from that ad segment. Bloody hell. <clears throat> For 2,000 gold, we could put down a camp. Placing a camp would provide us a substantial income and allowed us to unlock late game units, as well as helping us dodge child support payments by placing our units inside the camp, which would drastically lower our upkeep of them. Luckily, I had invested heavily into camp upgrade research, mainly involuntarily as they make up around 90% of the fucking research options, but now I wasn't complaining. The only problem is we had no money. However, this was easily fixed by ransacking a nearby Chaos Dwarf settlement for 967 gold, plus an additional 335 gold as a reward for victory, just enough to tip us over to 2.6k, allowing us to put down our first camp. Camps also have an area of effect heal, so as long as we had enough money and were inside the effect radius, our troops would automatically replenish. So I dump a few points into the Raider perk for our Ogre Lord Green 
increase us, which gives us plus 20% to our pillaging income. This meant I could spend a few turns with two of my lords in raiding stance in order to generate income, while my third lord sat in the encamp stance and used the income to heal and replenish units. Soon we were fully healed and were ready to get a taste of our first feast, courtesy of our Skaven friends, whose territory we were now pushing into. Still inside the camp's radius, however, we had a surplus of meat being generated each turn. God knows where this mystery meat was coming from, but with excess meat we could partake in pre-battle feasts for a plus 10% boost to speed, unit mass, and charge bonus. On top of this, we could make regular donations of spare meat to the Great Maw in exchange for buffs. So we popped the plus 10 melee attack buff and straddle up to our first target, the Fortress of Vorag, where we declare war on the Skaven. And luckily, our armies seem pretty balanced, although we were getting slightly mogged, so we had to fix that. Our first battle was rather easy. We take the fortress with minimal losses on our side, but in doing so, we piss off Vermich, who is now chasing after our significantly weakened army. But, unbeknownst to Vermich, he was door dashing our first meal straight to us the giant rat. Stepping onto the battlefield, we smush Vermich's rats before tenderizing our meat with our clubs and getting our designated pyromancer and chef, Furtstank, to grill him. After a gentle simmer, the giant rat was dead and it was time to eat. We had our first meal. We consumed the giant rat along with the rest of the captives, and so with our blood pressure soaring and our IQ plummeting straight down, thanks to repeated impacts to our heads, we waddled blindly on, fighting more Skaven armies, including one led by Tretch Craventail, who gave us a pretty solid 4,800 gold, enough for a new camp outside Bone Gulch and a few upgrades. First and Foremost, I focused on upgrades to lower unit upkeep and raise the camp income. With these skirmishes and camp upgrades, we finally had the funding to grow our army. This would be the dawn of what I dubbed the Cambrian Explosion, a sudden and rapid expansion to my unit roster, featuring fellas on horses, fellas on mammoths, and most importantly, Americans. Using our Americans, or lead belchers if you want to use the technical term, I hoped we would now be somewhat equally matched with both the Skaven and the Chaos Dwarves, who both use long-range weapons. <laughs> However, while we got the upper hand on the Skaven, who were now fleeing from us down to the coastline at the southwest, the dwarves were pushing in from the north, breaking the Geneva Convention by using napalm and other chemical weapons to wear down my ogres. So once again, we would run. But this time, at least I could use the justification of hunting down the Skaven remnants to gaslight myself into not having to admit defeat. We headed over to Lamia, where the last of the runt rats were hanging out. While one half of my army dealt with them on the surface, the other half headed into the creepy green slop basement of Lamia to introduce them to our new eugenics program. Finally, I sent my elite force of Weatherspoon's patrons to finish off the last remnants at the Pyramids of Giza. And with that, Clan Rictus was no more. I realized I was getting into the swing of a pretty good strategy. Place a camp, station most of my units inside to lower upkeep so that we were making a profit each turn, then drain the surrounding area of resources and money whilst hunting the local wildlife to extinction for our meat reserves, all while putting one of my lords into march stance and sending them along the road to our next campsite location. This allowed us to make steady progress along our journey while leveling our camps close to the max level so that we had access to the recruitment of more or less the full range of units available. So I sent Malbob off on his quest to establish a new camp. His job was simple. Reach this coast here, start a new camp, upgrade it, and then wait for the rest of the lords to move over. From this shoreline, we could take an easy voyage across the ocean to hunt for new meals in Vampire Coast and Lizardmen territory, but not before a quick detour up here to gobble up a Beastman Seigel. Surprisingly, the dwarves were on good terms with us. Passing through their mountains was easy, but as I moved further towards the coast, I got a real sinking feeling in my stomach. But just before, back at the camp, I had spotted a shipwreck and sent Greasus out to investigate. We arrived and explored the island, and on it we found some rogue pirates from the Vampire Coast, and with them, a rotting leviathan. We were looking at a decisive victory and a great hoard of treasure, presumably from an abandoned Betfred on the island. We docked on the shores, spotted our next target, and fired up the grill. The 
just how squishy and slow the bulk of their army was, my lead belchers and mannies from Ice Age made short sure work of them, while Furtstank and my riders cracked open the shell of the Leviathan and got cooking. <laughs> slapped some butter on her crab and tucked in. Two rare feasts consumed. We were now halfway to our goal. All we needed now was to eat two more beasts and to decimate a few factions. But back with Malbob on the other coastline, the sinking feeling in my stomach was reaffirmed. Pushing further towards the water revealed that the Nagash Tomb Kings had set up a very powerful empire and didn't like us waddling into their territory. I was hit by successive ambushes and defeats and had to rush my other lords over before marching straight towards the coast and sailing across the Atlantic Ocean, finally docking on the coasts of Brazil. And would you look at that? The Vampire Coast are here, presumably for sex tourism, dirty bastards. So we wiped them out, <laughs> took another faction off our list, and used these spoils to set up the Awakening Camp. This would become our HQ for our nefarious deeds on the island. And from here, we'd spawn all matter of overweight British men. If the camp outside Bone Gulch was our Cambrian explosion, we were now at our agricultural revolution, finally able to live off the land as we built multiple camps beside each other to increase our income even further. Within a few turns, we massively racked up our power, and with so many new bellies to fill, we were back on the hunt. And oh, would you look at that? The, uh, the Chaos Dwarves have been defeated? Hmm. Almost immediately, by a stroke of sheer luck, we ran into a pack of beastmen with two Cygors in their army. We met them in a shady woods by whatever this thing is. In fact, I should probably go ahead and censor that. Despite um. the Cygors' desperate attempts to fling their kidney stones at us, we quickly swarmed them, cooked them, or, or well, more of a light charring to keep the meat rare, and once we had victory, we enjoyed our 1,000 pound steak. With three courses down, three of Greasus' heart valves had also coincidentally collapsed. But before his heart gave out completely, there was still one last meal to consume. So we rushed after the lizard men, not just with the small force used to take down the beast men, but now with our entire force, which was large enough to force the Nagash Tomb Kings into attempting to manipulate us into believing that we'd been friends the whole time. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, because... You're my special friend. You've reached your limit on talking. Shut the fuck up. I accepted their peace treaties and gold and promised that we wouldn't attack. Wink wink. So we moved onwards towards the lizard men's territory and I found my target, the Hexawattle faction. When they least expected it, I sprung my trap and hit them with my entire force. Over time, I whittled down the lizard men through endless confrontations, tucking into frogs, skinks, and lizards along the way, but still no dread saurian crocodile. Eventually, we ground them down to their last army, who we chased after for a shockingly long time. This bastard was fast, so to actually engage him, I couldn't surround him with all my lords and could only use one army at a time. But on the bright side, they had a dread saurian. This fight would definitely be one of my toughest yet, but I knew it would be worth it to take that sweet crocodile meat. After a tough fight, finally, Killer Croc was dead. Ladies and gentlemen, mission accomplished. Four factions completely destroyed, and four endangered species hunted to extinction. As Greasus was now quietly easing into a brutal stroke, we had just enough time to take care of a final matter of business. The Chaos Dwarves were dead, so we didn't have to worry about revenge on them, but we still needed to purge the Egyptian fuckers from the face of the map and send them back home to their stinky furry god. So, let's get to work.
more as we told us. Thank you to War Thunder for kindly sponsoring this video. Don't forget, the massive bonus pack is available across all platforms, PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, and is available for a limited time only. Play for free now using the link in the pinned comment or video description, and new and returning players that haven't played in six months will receive the pack entirely for free, featuring some in-game goodies, premium access for seven days, and 100,000 silver lions. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.